We've told you before about the sleazy business deals that Vice President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, conducted while his father was in office. Well, tonight, in a very special Swamp Watch, we have some shocking new details. Joining me now to explain, author of Secret Empires, how the American political class hides corruption and enriches family and friends, the great Peter Schweitzer. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? I'm great, Steve. Great to be on with you. Thanks for having me. So I'm just going to say, take it away. You have the information. Let's, uh, let's hear it. Well, the story really begins in, uh, on June 28th when Devin Archer, business partner to Hunter Biden, uh, is convicted in a New York court uh, involving a bond scheme where they fraudulently sold $60 million worth of bonds connected to an Indian tribe. Um, one of the bank accounts that was used in that fraud was a bank account that Hunter Biden drew a lot of money from and a lot of foreign entities put a lot of money into. Uh, so just to give you an idea, over a 14-month period from 2014 through early 2016, while Joe Biden is vice president of the United States, a Ukrainian company called Burisma, uh, it's, it's controlled by a very corrupt oligarch, sends $3 million into this account. Uh, a Chinese government entity called Bohai Harvest, which is run by the Bank of China, sends $650,000 into this account. Keep in mind, this is only one account. We believe there are others. Uh, there are other cash transfers as well, Steve. There's $1.2 million that comes from some LLC from a small boutique Swiss bank. We don't know who's behind the LLC. The bank itself has been charged in six countries uh, for money laundering, so that makes it kind of sketchy. There's $142,000 going into this account from the son-in-law of the former prime minister of Kazakhstan. So large amounts of foreign money flowing in, and the number one recipient of the cash coming out is the vice president's son, Hunter Biden. It's so fascinating what you've unearthed here, um, because just, you know, all the focus, um, thanks to, to, in large part to your research, uh, really in the conversation around all this, has been in the Clinton Foundation and that, and that family and the, and the corruption around the Clintons. But it's looking like the Bidens are operating by the same playbook, which is getting the family into all this business, and, and especially at a time when China, as we're now re realizing, almost daily is our, not some kind of benign partner, but America's number one strategic rival. And yet they're doing business deals with the Chinese state. It's unbelievable while he's vice president. Yeah, no, you're exactly right, Steve. I mean, we're all familiar with globalization and the phenomenon as it relates to the economy and corporations. Well, corruption is being globalized as well. You know, 70 years ago, foreign governments, uh, you know, were, you know, a country like China or others were not quite as interested in every single thing that happens in Washington, D.C. Now what Washington, D.C. does can make you or break you, whether you're China, whether you're the mm -hmm. Ukraine, you name it. So what do they do? They look for friends in Washington. And one of the best ways to make friends in Washington is to do deals with family members. You know, Joe Biden every year is vice president. He has to disclose his income, assuming those disclosures are honest, he can't have a big fat check from the Chinese government in that disclosure form. But his adult son, Hunter Biden, he doesn't have to disclose anything. So, you know, as I recount in the book, and we've talked about on your show, in December of 2013, Vice President Biden flies over on Air Force Two to Beijing, China. On the plane with him is Hunter Biden. They have a lot of meetings. Uh, Vice President Biden doesn't really challenge the Chinese on much of anything. Ten days later, when they return, Bohai Harvest, this company we're talking about, uh, agrees to a $1 billion private equity deal with Hunter Biden's firm. And that's just one example of the sort of thing we're talking about. And this guy, I mean, you know, he's, a lot of people on the, on the Democrat side are talking about him as their preferred candidate for president next time. Yeah, I mean, th this is, I think, going to be a central issue, because if you look at the trajectory of Joe Biden as, as vice president, he was essentially U.S. point person on Chinese policy, and he was widely criticized for going very soft on them as it related to the South China Sea. That's at the same time his son is getting large checks from the Chinese government. 
Joe Biden is also point person on U.S. policy towards Ukraine at the same time that his son is getting large checks from the from the Ukrainian government. And he's accused of looking the other way at fraudulent behavior and corruption within the government of Ukraine. While his son is getting paid, Vice President Biden makes five trips to Ukraine on very, very sensitive matters. And the suggestion that wow. somehow, he, you know, he's he's not going to be sensitive to that fact is absolutely ridiculous. Honestly, Peter, your, your work is so important, um, and we so appreciate you coming on uh, and sharing it with us and, and all, the, all the work we're doing together for Swamp Watch. Uh, really appreciate it. Good to see you. See you soon. Okay. Thanks, Steve.